following message was recorded at The Way. For additional messages and information, log on to our website, www.thewaycolumbus.com, or email us at thewaycolumbus at gmail.com. Now, get ready to hear a word from God. The word of the Lord uh, last week was entitled, A Will to Do His Will. Uh, And what we did was we walked through uh, with Jesus through Gethsemane. I'm still getting a little bit of a ring. Uh, We walked with Jesus through Gethsemane and we watched the struggle between his will and his father's will. And then we also saw him gain victory. How many of you know when you can say, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, you have won the victory? Amen? That that is the greatest victory that any believer can ever win, is to sacrifice your personal will and submit that will to the will of God. And we we, we saw the humanity of Jesus... But then we saw Jesus go ahead and release his will so that the Father's will could be done. His will came into complete submission to the Father's will. And though this is a great example to every believer, there is one difference between Jesus and many of us. And the difference is this. He knew what the will of God was without a doubt. He knew. He knew exactly why he came, why he was sent. He knew exactly what his purpose. Matter of fact, he spoke of it to his disciples on several occasions to prepare them for the ultimate purpose of why God had sent him into the world. But many of us, sadly, we do not know the will of God with all certainty. We have a will to do his will if we do what that will was. Do you see what I'm saying? We have a will to do his will. God, I, 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 whatever you want me to, you know, when we get to saying what things like general stuff, like whatever you want me to do, you don't know what he wants you to do. <laughs> wherever you want me to go, I'm, I don't know where you want me to go, but it just sounds good to just, just generalize the will of God, but truth be told, with all certainty, we don't know what his will is for our lives. If we did, we would make different decisions. If we did, we wouldn't be so easily rattled when things happen in life that catch us off guard. See, when you're on, it's something about knowing that you're on assignment that causes stability in your life when unstable things happen. But if you're not sure what the will of God is for your life, sometimes you become life's rag doll. Just flipped and flopped and tossed and turned and up today and down tomorrow. And praise him today and give up on him. To, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Tomorrow. Today, I want to help you discover how to discern what God's will is for your life. I want to help you. I, I, I want to help you. Touch somebody and tell them the man of God, he wants to help us today. Many of you stand between several choices. And you truly don't know which one it is. You heard Pastor Kendall say a couple of weeks ago that it's a good choice. And a good choice. How do you know what God's will is when both choices look good? How do you know? 
How do you know what God's will is when both roads could have a favorable outcome for you? How do you how do you know? Today, God is going to reveal to us the secret. Let's quickly look at Ephesians uh, chapter five. Now, I'm going somewhere, so I want y'all to hold on. And I need somebody praying. Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to look at verses 15 through 17. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. The Bible reads, pay careful attention then to how you walk. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Verse 16, making the most of the time my God because the days are evil verse 17 so don't be foolish look at somebody and tell them don't be foolish don't be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is it is our responsibility as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ to understand what the Lord's will is. In other words, when you don't understand what the Lord's will is, you can't do anything but live like a fool. When you don't understand what the Lord's will is, you're going to make fleshly and foolish decisions time and time and time again. So the scriptures admonish us to pay careful attention to how we walk. To make sure that we are walking in the ordered steps of God. And making most of the time. How many of you know that when you live a life that is centered on God's will and purpose for your life, nothing you do will be a waste of time. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm saying nothing you do that's in alignment and in accordance with the will and plan and purpose and desire of God for your life is a waste of time. But how many of you can look back over your life and see great pockets of time where you wasted time? Wasted time in relationships, wasted time with friendships, wasted time at jobs, just, a, just wasting time, just doing stuff with no guidance and no direction and no clarity, scraping and scrounging, trying to make something happen for yourself rather than seeking the counsel of God for your life. Mm. We must understand, it is imperative that we understand, it is critical that we understand what the Lord's will is. And trust me, the Lord has a will for you. I don't care what your mama said, what your daddy said, what your boyfriend said, what your girlfriend said, what your boss said, whoever said. If it was your pastor that said it, if it was a minister that said it, understand that God has a specific will for you. Your life is not an accident. Your existence is not meaningless. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how many mistakes you've made. I don't care what the plight of your life is. Your life is not an accident. But it was planned and it has purpose and it is your responsibility to find out what that purpose is. But many of us are flailing in situations like a fish out of water. 
We're flailing, gasping, because we're in an environment that we were not created to live in. Oh, God. We're not in the right environment. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. That's the right environment. I said that's the right environment. For each and every one of us to find our lives in. Because in the will of God is where you're going to find your substance. In the will of God is where you're going to find your provision. See, see, oh God, when, when you're in alignment with, it, with the perfect will of God, it's God's responsibility to make sure the things he has said come to pass. For the Bible says that the Lord watches over his word. Mm. Uh, he doesn't watch over my word. He doesn't watch over what I want to do. He watches over his word. My God. So that means if I'm in alignment with the will and plan of God, I've got a guarantee. Yes, 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 yes. I got a guarantee for a favorable outcome. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I have a guarantee for things to work out in my favor, for things to work out for my good. I got a guarantee. Ain't no guarantees outside of the will of God. You get what you get. It, it happens the way it's going to happen. It might turn out okay and it might not, but there's a guarantee attached to understanding the will of God and walking diligently, following the steps of his word. Listening for his next instruction. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. I'm listening for what God wants me to do next. I'm listening for where God wants me to go next. I'm listening for where God wants me to work next. I'm listening for where God wants me to invest next. I'm listening. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm listening for the next divine connection, the next relationship that's going to take me to the next level in my business, that's going to take me to to the next level in my life I'm listening I'm I'm listening I'm not just out here trying to figure out and trying a little of this and trying a little of that and trying a little of the other I'm trying to live out of the mouth of God I'm trying to live out of the mouth of God so we must understand what the Lord's will is now now when you look at Romans I'm going to my text. I ain't going to be long today. When, when, when you look at Romans, how many of you know this is a very familiar passage of Scripture? As a matter of fact, you've probably heard it ministered here, taught here several, several dozens of times. Amen? And, 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 and we have traditional themes that we focus on out of this passage of Scripture. Uh, we focus on uh, the mercies of God uh, causing us in view of, in light of, because of the mercies of God, we encourage each other to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, pure unto the Lord. To put away things that would cause our sacrifice to the Lord and our worship to the Lord to be tainted. We, 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 we focus on that. We, that's, that's, that's important. And that's important. That's not unimportant in this text. But that's not what I want to talk about today. And then we talk about, uh, we hear people talking about uh, not being conformed to this world, to, to the pattern of this world, to the thought process and the philosophies of this world. Not to be conformed, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And that's important. But today I, I want to focus on that that last clause of verse 2 of Romans chapter 12. It says, though you, uh, so that you may discern, or uh, your King James may say, prove what is the good, the pleasing, and the perfect will of God. Everything spoken of in those two verses leading up to that B clause is really about positioning ourselves to be able to discern the will of God. 
Now, now let's look quickly at what the word discern means here in this text. It says here that discern means to judge to be right. To judge to be right. Or commendable. Or to think well of. To judge to be right. In other words, that when our mind is renewed, it enables us to judge God's will to be right above other wills. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It, it enables us to elevate the will of God. It gives us the ability to determine right from wrong. Let, let me put it this way. Anything that's not the will of God for your life is wrong. I said anything that you ascribe to that is not the will of God for your life is wrong. But when your mind is not renewed, you can't perceive the difference. As I look at this text, I want to point out several things. One of the things that sticks out to me and I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to point this out. It, it, the will of God is only a mystery to an unrenewed mind. I'm gonna say it again. The will of God is only a mystery to an unrenewed mind or a carnal mind. Mm. See, now I, I'm, I'm helping you because I, I'm trying to show you how to discern the will of God. There is a difference, however, between mind renewal and behavior modification. See, see, church. And I'm talking about what we do corporately when we come together and the way church is set up. Church focuses on behavior modification. There's a certain way you carry yourself. There's a certain way to worship. There are certain ways to pray. There are certain ways you act in certain situations. It's behavior modification. But there is a difference between mind renewal and behavior modification. For there is something about the human mind that enables us to change what we do given the circumstance, but not necessarily having changed how we think. We have an ability to do the right thing and it not be because we really believe it. To say the right thing, but my heart is saying something else. You know how we do it. I love you with the love of the Lord. With your mouth. But love ain't in your heart. Oh, y'all don't. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm talking about there's a difference between behavior modification and a renewed mind. God. God. This is how we approach serving God. We approach serving God from a behavior modification standpoint. Mm. We have
have not changed our thinking on certain things. We're just doing what we need to do to fit in. Let me let me tell you why why living for God is so difficult for many of us. Living for God is difficult for many of us because our minds really have not been renewed. Let me help you. Let me let me help you. God, help me to unpack this. What you have to understand is that Jesus has not come into our lives to tweak who we are. Hello? I said Jesus didn't come to make you a better version of you. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. new. Do you understand that what the scriptures indicate here is not an improvement upon how you think? It's a redoing of how you think. See, the problem is, is that many of us have been trying to serve God while holding on to our old mind. By trying to hold on to our old mindsets. What we do is we just mix a little God in the pot. (laughs) Throw a little scripture in. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God is not trying to tweak how you think. He's trying to recreate how you think. Many of us are still conformed to the world's way of thinking and we think it's all right with God. God don't compromise on this point. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God doesn't compromise on this point. He wants to give us a new mind. That means I don't think the way I used to think. That means I'm no longer governed by what Big Mama taught me or what Grandmama taught me or what Daddy taught me or what Mama taught me. Mama wit may be great, but if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's got to go. Daddy's wisdom may have been great for someone who was living according to the pattern of this world. But for someone who wants to live according to the pattern of God, who wants to be transformed and translated into a new kingdom, you can't hold on to those things. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me see if I can give you an example. Many of us stop doing things to fit in, like we stop sleeping around, but we're doing it to fit in. Uh, we stop going to the club. We stop getting high. We stop getting, getting drunk, but it's really just to fit in because the truth be told, if I stop having sex outside of marriage, Yet, I still think how the world thinks about sex. My mind is not renewed. You you don't hear what I'm saying? It's a struggle to discern the will of God if your mind is not renewed. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? The problem with many of us as to why, number one, we can't discern the will of God. Number two, we can't pursue the will of God 
is that our mind is not really renewed in that area. Let me put it another way. We don't really believe the word. No, we don't. No, we don't. I said we don't believe the word. God. We believe the aspects of the word that benefit us, but we're not willing to release those old, those worldly, those carnal, those demonic mindsets that keep us ensnared and trapped and entangled in things that Jesus died to give us freedom from. Come on. You will never discern the will of God until your mind has been renewed. This is why the word, getting the word in you is so important. See, and here's the problem. We, we can quote the word and we can whip the word out on somebody else. But the bottom line is we don't really believe the word that we're whipping out on other people. That it has not become a part of who we are. And so it does not work for us. And it does not benefit us. The Bible says that the word did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. You can quote all the scriptures you want to quote. You can know the Greek and the Hebrew and Swahili too. But if it's not mixed with faith, it will not profit you. I'm talking to someone who, who's having issues discerning the will of God. Now, I got a, I got a couple points that I, that I want to hit. You can't discern God's will through reason and intellect. Your mind does not have the capacity in and of itself to discern God's will. You can't say that makes sense and that doesn't make sense. And so because that doesn't make sense to me, that must not be God's will. No. That's not how we discern his will. Come on, Pastor Come on. Come on. And some of us are stuck because we live in rationalization and reasoning. And so we never can fully move into the purpose and plan of God for our lives because our reason fights with the will of God. Our intellect fights with the will of God, which stops us from experiencing things that we could experience with God because it don't make sense. Some of you will never experience the gifts of God and the spirit of God to the dimension that he wants you to experience it because your head is in the way. Mm. Some people are too smart for them, their own good. I said some people are too smart for their own good. And they're living their lives according to what makes sense and according to their educational background. But they're not living their lives according to faith in the word of God and in the son of God. Y'all quiet. All right. Let me move on to the next point. You can't discern God's will through your emotions. Oh, let me help you. Your emotions are like a roller coaster ride. They're up and they're down and they're in and they're out. And I love you and I hate you and I feel good about you today, but I don't like you tomorrow. Come on. I feel like I can take the world. Feel, feel. You hear what I'm saying? I feel like today I can do anything God would have me to do today. I feel a yes in my spirit. And tomorrow, I don't feel like it now. Tomorrow, I don't feel that, in, that, that, that energy and I don't, I don't feel that push and that drive. So maybe what I felt yesterday wasn't really God's will. Right, right, right. My God. But you can't discern God's will, God. I, 
You can't discern God's will through your emotions. Emotions have their place. Emotions have their part. It's just not in the discerning process. It's just not in the faith process. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's not where your emotions are employed. Mm. You cannot discern God's will through past experiences. Oh, God. Some of us are messed up right now because we're trying to discern God's will for our life through past experiences, good ones and bad ones. I love it when God is getting ready to bring Israel out and he tells them, remember uh, I, that I took you through the wilderness and I brought you through the Red Sea. And he, he goes through his litany of things that he, he wanted to remind them of. And then he tells them, forget all of that now. Now that I've reminded you of what I did, forget all of that now because I'm about to do a new thing in you and now it shall, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, now it shall spring forth. If they had interpreted God through their past experiences alone, they would have missed the will of God for today. Oh, you still don't believe it. Abraham, Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son, and, and give him back to me. So Abraham grabs the boy and grabs the wood and tells his servant, stay behind. Let's, the lad and I are going to worship. And he prepares the altar. And he prepares the fire and he sharpens the knife. And Isaac says, Dad, I see the wood and I see the fire, but where is the sacrifice? And so Abraham lifts his promised son and lays him on the altar. And lifts the knife because God said. And as he's dropping the knife, the angel of the Lord says, stop. What if Abraham had continued to discern the voice of God through his past experience with God? My God, some of us are limited because we're living in the past. Some of us are limited because of how God used to move. Some of us are limited because of how God used to speak. Some of us are limited because of mistakes from our past and challenges from our past. But you cannot discern the will of God through your past experiences. The word of God the renewal of the mind with the word of God is critical to proper discernment y'all don't hear what I'm saying I said the word of God if you want to know what the will of God is you got to get God's mind in your mind I said you got to get God's mind in your mind. And this is God's mind. These are not God's suggestions. These, this is God's mind. And until this gets in your mind and washes your mind and eradicates your mind and changes your mind and challenges your upbringing and challenges what you were taught and told and gives you a new way of thinking, you can't discern God's will. You can't discern it. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is living. My God. Do you know this word? Ha, I feel God's presence. Do you know this word is living? 
Do you know this is not a dead book? Do you know this is not a book of of poetry and, and a book of just old words that, that have no life and have no meaning? Do you know the very life of God pours from the pages of this book? Do you know your sustaining is in this book? Do you know your peace of mind is in this book? Do you know your ministry calling is in this book? Put the word of God is living. The word of God is the only book that I know that every time I go back and read it, I see something else. My God. He took a passage and he spoke one thing to me out of it at one time in my life. When I go back to that passage at another time in my life, it speaks something else. The word of God is alive. My God. My God. And it's alive because we don't serve a dead God. It's alive because we don't serve a statue. It's alive, but my God, because we don't serve a picture. But our God is living and he yet speaks. I said he yet speaks. Come on, touch three people and tell them he yet speaks. He yet speaks. He yet speaks. He yet speaks. The word, my God, of God is living and, and it's effective. Woo. Yes. Woo. Yes. Oh, do you know what you've got at your disposal that you leave sitting on the table and never open up? Do, do you know what you If you're ineffective in your life, it's because you haven't put the effective word of God down in your spirit. The Bible says it's the engrafted word of God that's able to save your soul. You know the term engrafted, you might think of it as a skin graft for burn victims or victims that have been uh, injured in some kind of way and their skin has been destroyed. They can take skin from another part of their body and put it on the affected part of their body and the skin will graft, it will attach, it will connect, it will become a part of the new part of their body. Do you know the engrafted word, the word that connects to your soul, the word that connects to your mind, the word that becomes a part of you, it, will, it is able to save your soul. It's able. It's able to save your soul. So the word of God is, is living. It's effective. Are you ineffective in your life right now? You got areas in your life where you're not being effective? It's because the word is not operating in that area. But if you would ever put the word to work. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If you would ever put the word to work, if you would ever put your feelings aside, put your ideas aside, put your concepts aside, put what you think and what they said aside, and elevate the word of God. Mm. Elevate the word of God above everything and everybody else. Here, here, here. I like this part. It says, and it's sharper. Hmm. The, the Ephesians calls the word of God a sword. This is the this is the sword of the spirit. The word of God cuts. Now listen, some of y'all been using the word of God as a weapon on other people. <laughs> See, 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 the word of God is, 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 it's an, it's, it's a sword in spiritual warfare. See, see, we got to stop cutting our brothers and sisters and trying to get them fixed with the word. And we got to start cutting the enemy. And, and, and let me go a step further. We got to start cutting on ourselves. We got to stop, start cutting the enemy and start cutting on us. It's a two-edged sword. I said it's a two-edged sword. That means it cuts out and it cuts in. 
<laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's a two-edged sword. And, and, and it's sharp. It is so sharp. God, I hope y'all hear what God is saying. It, it is so sharp that it penetrates as far as the separation of soul and spirit. Oh, God, I'm trying to tell you why your mind should be renewed. I'm trying to tell you how to discern the will of God It's through the word of God and not just the reading and memorization of the word of God. But that word that becomes a very part of your being, that word that can go into your mind and wash your mind of past things, and past failures, and past sin, that word that changes how you think about your baby daddy. That, that word that changes how you think about your coworkers. That word, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, that changes how you think and feel about your very enemies. See, see, you know whether or not your mind is renewed by how you react and respond to things. That's how you know. That's how you know, okay, I, I got to I gotta let the word in that area. Because I'm not reacting right. I'm not responding right. And I can't react and respond right unless I'm renewed in my mind. So this, this word here is sharp, and it's penetrating. And it separates soul and spirit. In other words, this word will separate from you what is your carnal mind from what is the mind of the spirit. I said the word will separate. It will show you, it will enable you to judge what is soul and what is spirit. The word. This is why the enemy fights us on the word so much. This is why he doesn't want us to get the word in us. Because if we get the word in us, we will become acutely aware of what is us. You don't need no word from God. You don't need nobody to tell you, give you no prophetic word. You don't need nobody to tell you you're wrong. You'll know you're wrong because the word will stand up and say you're wrong. That was your flesh. The word, the word is so sharp that it will separate joints and marrow. And my grandmama, she, she eat chicken and she does things to chicken that's not godly. <laughs> it's not godly. It's like, it's dead, grandmama. It's gone. The meat is gone. The gristle is gone. Why is that bone still in your mouth? <laughs> she don't stop eating the bone till she is the chicken till she has separated the bone and the meat. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The word of God is so sharp that it'll separate bone and marrow. In other words, it cuts to the very core. Ah. See, this is why some of us uh, uh, stay home from church uh, when you ain't right. I said some of us stay home from church when you know you ain't right, don't you? I know you do. Because I would always miss them services when the prophets would come to town. Nope, not going there. Nope. My life ain't quite right. I don't want to get called out. You know? I, you know, I don't know what kind of prophets we're dealing with today. But the prophets of the ground when I grew up saw sin. They would not. I'm serious. Like they would tell you, yep, you were sleeping with somebody last night. Yep, you lying on the pastor. Yep. Come on. They would tell. They would tell on you. 
That wasn't no Old Testament stuff. That's in my lifetime. Where they would come to a church and prophesy the word of the Lord and say, if you don't repent, death is coming to this house. And folks would die. Mm. So many of us, you know, you know, it ain't that extreme for many of us today because we don't walk that close to God. But, but, but the word cuts all the way down to the core. Past the white meat, y'all. Come on. Past the white meat. The word, the word gets all the way down in your, all up in your stuff. Like, you, you ain't heard a message till, till it feel like the preacher was sitting in your living room listening to your conversation. Surely he wasn't there. But that's what the word of God does. It cuts to the core of things. It gets down to the nitty gritty, y'all. Come on. It, it is able to judge. God, help me. It's able to discern the ideas and thoughts of the heart. Let's, let's lay there for a minute. The word of God is able to discern the ideas and thoughts of your heart. The word of God can call balls and strikes. With your ideas, God, help me. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's why the enemy don't want the word in you. Because if the word ever gets in you, he'll never be able to plant thoughts and ideas that would get you off track. Because you'll be able to discern, nope, that's not God, that's me. The Bible says, pulling down strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. The word of God will pull down strongholds. That's that thing that everybody tries to tell you about you that you don't see. It's a stronghold. I said, that's that thing about you that everybody sees but you, but you can't hear it. It's a stronghold. I ain't going to get into that. Y'all getting quiet. So y'all, y'all, the word, y'all don't want the word to cut that deep, do you? Y'all don't want the word to cut that deep. Everybody try to tell you you're defensive. You're defensive. You're defensive. No, I'm not. You're defensive. No, I'm not. You're defensive. No, I'm not. You're being defensive. And you can't see it. You can't see it. You can't see it. You're hateful. You're unforgiving. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. The word of God will pull down that stronghold if you let the word of God renew your mind. See, see, see when the word of God renews your mind, you're able to apply the word that says not to think more highly of yourself than you are. That if one thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. If the word of God was a part of your life, those scriptures would be lived out in how you live. And many of us say, well, he's not talking to me because I know I'm not perfect. You know you're not perfect until somebody tells you you're not, you're, you, you're not perfect. That's, that's, that's when the rubber meets the road. It's when, it's when you're confronted with truth. It 
See, the word of God will enable us to remain teachable and pliable, like submitting one to another. Come on. Who do you think you are, your brother in Christ? Who do you think you are telling me that? I'm your brother in Christ and I love you and it's my responsibility to hold you accountable as it's your responsibility to hold me accountable. Mm. See, this is how you know you ain't renewed. Because this stuff is like nails on a chalkboard. It's like nails. It's like nails. It's like nails on a chalkboard to your, to your mind, to your flesh. Your flesh don't want to deal with that. But you wonder why you can't discern God's will for your life. You wonder why you have no clue what you're supposed to be doing right now. You cannot discern God's will with a worldly mind. You cannot discern God's will with a carnal mind. That's what a worldly mind is. It's a carnal mind. It's a mind that's not mindful. Uh, okay, let me, give you, let me give you a biblical example. Because I don't want you to dismiss this word because some of y'all don't think you're carnal, but you are. Yes, you are. Jesus tells his disciples that he's going to die. And Peter speaks up and says, no, Lord, we're not going to let that happen. And Jesus rebukes him and says, get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God. It's not, carnality is not always about sin. My God, that's right. Carnality is about not being mindful of the things of God. Speaking out of turn. Speaking things that aren't God's will. It's carnality. Speaking out of your reason and your knowledge and your experience and your background is carnality. Come on. Come on up out, out the gutter. I know you ain't sleeping around. I know you ain't in the club. But you're still carnal. Because you ain't mindful of the things of God. Your ideas don't line up with his plan and his carnality. God, help me. It's carnality. Who cares what you think? Who cares if God told me to do something? Who cares what you think? Who cares what you can see? And some of us are guilty of speaking against the will of God in other people's lives because we don't have a mind of Christ. Because you don't see it don't mean God didn't say it. And we got to learn how to shut up. Peter, Peter's gateway of carnality in this case was his love for Jesus. It wasn't sin. He loved him. I said Peter loved him. Peter didn't want to be without him. Peter Peter didn't want to lose him. But Peter, speaking out of his love, spoke out of turn. Because Peter's love caused him to put his mouth on God's will. See, carnality doesn't just come through the form of the things we think are sensual and sexual. Carnality is thinking in alignment with anything that's in opposition to the will of God for your life or somebody else's. And some of us are quick to put our mouths on things that God has said to somebody. But sometimes you just got to be quiet. Be quiet. 
Sometimes, sometimes you gotta be, you gotta be like Jacob. You gotta tell the boy, stop, stop talking. But observe the saying, y'all. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, he he was out of pocket for running his mouth. But 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 it was something that Jacob knew. Jacob said, "Well, it's a little outlandish, but I've learned how not to judge things before their time." Mm. Learn how not to judge things before their time. I've learned how not to judge things before their time. If it's God, it'll come to being. If it's not God, it'll come to not. Shut up. You ain't got to convince everybody they ain't doing the will of God. You ain't got to convince everybody what the will of God is for them. See, that's the lesson that we're learning as pastors more and more. I got, it don't help if you hear God's will for your life through me. It don't help till your mind is submitted to the word of God and you can discern his will for yourself. It'll stick because if it comes from me, you can blame me if it don't work. If it come, y'all don't. If it comes from me, you can give me the credit rather than the glory going to God. My job is to teach you how to discern God's will. That when the word takes over your mind. See, we get scared in the church of terms like brainwashing because we've seen people's brainwashed, but it wasn't with the word. See, but brainwashing is okay when it's with the word. If he washes your brain with his word, the only mind that's left is the mind of Christ. And when you have the mind of Christ, then you can discern what is. Then you can discern what is that good, that pleasing, that perfect. Ah, see, 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 this kind of discernment enables us to look at God's will even when it don't feel good and say it's perfect. It's perfect. When God says leave that person alone, when God says quit that job, my flesh might scream. My flesh might say, but God, where's the next job coming from? My flesh might say, where's the next honey coming from? But my spirit will say, it's perfect. God's will is perfect. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody's got to come to the place where the Word of God is such a part of your life that whatever His will is, is perfect. If it's my life, it's perfect. If it's my family, it's perfect. It's perfect. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's perfect. It's painful, but it's perfect. It's uncomfortable, but it's perfect. It goes against everything I've been taught, but it's perfect. It's lonely, but it's perfect. It's perfect. My flesh is screaming in the opposite direction. My flesh wants what it can't have, but it's his will is perfect. God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. May not match up with my dreams. May not match up with my career path. May not ma- match up with the degree that I have. But God, if it ain't your will, it's perfect. It's all right. Whatever your will is, it's perfect. When we really take the word of God as life. This is my lifeline. Tamako Shate. This is my lifeline. This is how I live. 
I can't make a decision I take without his word. I can't make a move without his word. I don't know what's up and what's down without his word until his word becomes engrafted in me. I'll never be able to discern his will properly. I'll never be able to take joy in his judgments. Mm. Mm. See, this is how David was able to take the punishment of God and still worship. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I said, this is how David was able to take the punishment of God and still worship him because he knew that God's judgments were righteous. They were perfect. Until God's will and plan, despite what it contradicts in your life, is perfect to you. You'll never discern his will. Consequently, you'll never live his will. You'll live like a fool. Stand on your feet. Thank you for listening. We hope this message has enriched your life. For more information, log on to our website, www.thewaycolumbus.com or email us at thewaycolumbus at gmail.com. And remember, Jesus is the way. 